Hello everyone and welcome to Golf Center's coverage of the 2016 Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. I'm your host Chris Trembley and we're coming to you from the beautiful Hampton Hall Club, the primary facility for this year's tournament. To get a better understanding of the magnitude of this event and the numbers involved with players, the average PGA Tour event has anywhere from 144 to 156 players. The Masters every year, about 90 to 100 players. This year, despite Hurricane Matthew, which has pushed this tournament back a couple weeks, we have 660 players here. That's right, 660 players. And how did they all get here? Well, you need to understand now how the Golf Week Amateur Tour works. They have chapters all over the country, from up in New England all the way down to San Diego. And throughout the course of the year, players accumulate points in their respective flights, which garner them the right to be part of this tournament. Now, we know we're at Hampton Hall today, and it doesn't mean it's the only course that is hosting all of these players, okay? Each um, flight, which, and there's five of them, has 54 holes they're playing of individual stroke play over seven courses, and needless to say, you think that handicaps come into play. Well, they do not. Zero to 3.9 is the scratch flight, and they go upwards from there. 54 holes of individual stroke play, but the one catch is that for the flights of A, B, C, and D, excluding the championship flight, the max score they can take on a hole is a triple bogey. So therefore, that avoids maybe somebody taking a really big number coming down the stretch, and we'll see how that plays out today. Our seven host facilities are two on Hilton Head, Atlantic Dunes, which has recently been redone by Davis Love III, and Dolphin Head. And here in Bluffton, we have Eagles Point and Crescent Point, along with Hilton Head National, Pinecrest, and of course, our primary facility, Hampton Hall. Now, we want to make sure that everybody has a good idea as to who our leaders are going into the third round. In the championship flight, Jay Barnes has shot 143 over two rounds. He's got a four-stroke lead over Joe Jaspers and Zach McKelvey. Joe Jaspers is a multi-time winner of this event in the championship flight, so it ought to be interesting to see if he can make a move here today in day three. In the A flight, they're over at Hilton Head National. Tom Chambers is at 153. He plays out of the Charlotte chapter. Dwayne Schock is at 154, along with John Mellon. In the B flight, which is what we're covering here today at Hampton Hall, we have James Bird, who's at 161, Randy Dorsey's at 165, and we have four players that are five strokes back at 166. So playing that beautiful back nine here with a couple testy holes at the end, it ought to be interesting to see what happens there. The C flight, they're over at Eagles Point. Miguel Tonito is at 168, Michelle Gillen is at 169, along with Wayne Grease. We're gonna see how that plays out over at Eagles Point. And finally at Pinecrest, Michael Martin is at 183, Jeff Myers at 184, and Jonathan Pinckney at 186. So with all of these different competitions going on, and we're gonna sum everything up for you at the end of the day, it ought to be interesting to see how things play out. When we come back here on Golf Center, we're gonna be joined by Dennis McCormick, the Golf Week Amateur Tour Director and Chairman. So stick with us, sit back and relax. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Golf Center. We're now joined by Golf Week Amateur Tour Director and Chairman Dennis McCormick. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. We're uh, happy to be at Hampton Hall and on six courses around the island. More than anything, we're just happy to be here in general. Let's talk about the little spike. We might as well get it out of the way right now that Hurricane Matthew threw into this tournament. Yeah, um, with Hurricane Matthew, right before uh, it made its presence on Hilton Head Island, we had 859 guys signed up to play eight golf courses for our 10th year on the island. Obviously, after a hurricane came through, uh, our numbers reduced a little bit, but surprisingly enough, we still have over 650 players playing here, and we were, we were able to ascertain six golf courses that are all in amazing shape to continue the tradition of playing on Hilton Head Island. We are at Hampton Hall, Pinecrest, Eagles Point, Dolphin Head, Amazingly enough, Sea Pines, the Atlantic Dune course opened just in time for us to be able to get back on that. And then also we're at Hilton Head National, a new venue for us this year. As you said, 10th year back here, what brings you back every year? Um, I love the island and the facilities and the people. 
Uh, the quality of the golf courses and actually my players now tell me that this is what they look forward to all year long. A lot of them bring their whole families for a week. Most of them now spend time here and a lot of them are looking at buying properties in the future. As you said, 659 players this year, down from 859. That's a lot of people still reworking their schedule. How does the tour continue to grow? Well, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of factors. I have good representation around the country with my local tour directors that do a great job promoting it. Obviously, the engine is Golf Week magazine. They do a great job of getting the word out for us. And then just the players and the camaraderie of, of itself uh, that people just enjoy, make lasting friendships on this tour. Um, and the competitiveness is a, a, obviously a, a focal point of the tour as well. The sponsors, they play a huge part in this event. Tell us about their role this week. They do. Um, we're very fortunate to have Edwin Watts as our national retail sponsor. Uh, they did a lot to put together uh, demo days for us, bring in extra vendors like Golf Pride Grip, Shaft Line Putter. And then, of course, we had the tailor-made fitting team here for the entire week again. Uh, we did over 200 fittings. They were fortunate enough to have Hampton Hall for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Friday, even though Palmetto Dunes did not have their golf courses open, they were kind enough to host us on the Hills course all three days for lunch and the final day of the tailor-made fitting. We're flighted here. We have five different flights all have to do with somebody's respective handicap. How does the tour protect the integrity of the handicaps? How do they work that? Sure, we, we only take their tournament rounds. Uh, we have developed a system which is basically the USGA system. So the indexes, once you drop below the index, even if it's a percentage of a point, you are automatically moved up a flight. So we have champ flight, which is zero to 3.9, A flight, which is four to 8.9, B flight, which is 9 to 13.9, C flight, which is 14 to 18.9, and then our D flight gentlemen are 19 and above. We actually have three or four guys that have played on this tour a long time and moved from D flight all the way to champ flight over the years. They've probably been taking a little instruction working on their game too, don't you think? Yes, sir. They certainly have, and they take a lot of pride in playing on this tour, and uh, the better they get, the better it is for us. Very quickly, the Stand Up to Cancer banner on the website, and I see it around here at the tournament. That touches home for you. Tell us really quickly about that. Yeah, um, I was uh, in college and my mom passed with lymphoma, uh, and then I lost a tour director that was 40 years old. Um, and now, unfortunately, my senior, most senior veteran tour director is inflicted with cancer, and uh, unfortunately, it's terminal. So we all, as a unit, get together, raise money. We have currently raised over $150,000 for stand-up cancer. That's just terrific. For those that aren't yet part of the Golf Week Amateur Tour, where can they go to find out more about it and potentially become part of this great national championship? Sure, you can go to our webpage, www.amateurgolftour.net, or Google Golf Week. We're all over the Golf Week webpage as well. Or in your local tournament off, uh, tur excuse me, local golf courses, we have brochures and posters all around the country. Dennis, thanks so much for being with us. We look forward to many more years hosting the championship. Thank you all too. Thanks very much, Chris. Thanks to Brett and Hampton Hall. As I mentioned at the top of the show, the Hampton Hall Club is our primary host this year. And joining us now is their PGA head golf professional, Brent Carlson. Brent, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to have you, Chris. Third year that Hampton Hall has been part of this tournament. Why have they chosen to become affiliated with it? That's well, a good showcase for us, uh, Chris. I think more than anything else, it's nice to have 600 people come and get a chance to see your uh, property. Uh, a lot of these guys will end up retiring in our area. We are a very, um, very great place for a retirement community. There's active uh, young people as well in the community, but it's and there's a lot of retirees, and, and we would like them to uh, be a part of the action when they're retired. I know how great the golf course is, and I think somebody that a lot of people might have heard of before is the designer, but why don't you tell everybody about the golf course? Well, the course was designed by Pete Dye, um, and uh, he did a great job here. It's a little more user-friendly than some of his designs. He was actually here uh, this past year. Uh, it was great to see how much he could recall about the design. Uh, I was really taken by that. He remembered uh, uh, certain holes very, very well, um, and it was just a real pleasure to have him here. 
We have the B flight here today, playing in the final round. That is the people with the handicap index from 9.0 to 13.9. It gets pretty dicey as we come down to the last few holes. Why don't you tell everybody about maybe their last scoring opportunity and what they'll face on the last few? Yeah, well, Chris, as you know, I think 15 really, hole 15 is the last chance for birdie here, par 5. Uh, 16 is a real solid par 4, so there's a birdie there if you hit a great shot. 17 is a par 3, elevated green. Uh, I don't think you'll see many birdies or pars there coming down the stretch, especially with the uh, juice pumping. Uh, and then 18 really is one of the hardest holes within uh, 100 miles of here. It's just very, very difficult. Uh, trouble everywhere, uh, and uh, it's a great hole to finish a golf tournament. And when you're playing for a national championship, playing a tough 18th hole, and it's not as though these players are doing this all that often, it can certainly get a little bit dicey at the end. Hampton Hall, besides having a wonderful golf course, also has a lot of other terrific amenities, including the community clubhouse. Why don't you tell everybody about them? Sure. Uh, well, the. The food is great uh, here, Chris. Uh, there's a great chef. Uh, our community clubhouse does host some really wonderful events, uh, weddings. Uh, there's a great fitness center over there, which I've never been into. Uh, there is a wonderful tennis program as well. So it's, uh, the, it's a club really that has it all. Uh, the community is just uh, really, really still growing at this point and uh, obviously just looking for uh, uh, membership. Your golf programs, everybody says you want to run a wonderful golf operation here. Tell everybody really quickly about your golf programs. Well, you know, we put we try to make it as fun. This is golf, right? So we try it to is. make it as fun for people as possible. We have some great instructional programs. But if you ask me, the best part really is the membership does a great job of getting people involved uh, early in their membership stay. Uh, there are a number of games that are that they can play in every day of the week, really. Um, there are times where people will just want to play at 2.30 by themselves and be left alone, and that's available to them. But if you're someone that is looking to play and get get involved in a group situation with golf, this is, this is a great place for you. And how can people find out more info on this great community? Uh, the club website is HamptonHallClubSC.com or uh, give me a call at the golf shop. I'm here uh, quite a bit. Brent, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us, Chris. When we come back here on Golf Center, we're going to get out to the course for more action on the 2016 Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. Okay, so Mike Kim now, after two big shots, is pin high in two in the front bunker. A good bunker shot here should give him a good chance at birdie. It gets out, hits the slope, and that's going to run down very nicely to the hole. So a wonderful play by Mike Kim here. It sets himself up for about a two-footer for birdie here on number 15. All right, James Bird now, from about 35 feet, trying to salvage a par after kind of starting to make a mess of things here after his second shot put him in good position. He gets going up and over the ridge. Looks like the distance control is pretty good, and he gets himself down there, and he's going to have about five feet left to save his par. Michael Kim now has an opportunity to pick up three shots after hitting a terrific bunker shot for his third. He was pin high in two. There's a birdie for Michael Kim, so very well done. On the 17th here at Hampton Hall, Jerry Hamashek getting ready to hit his approach. Holes playing about 165 yards today. Very little wind to the player's back. And he started this one right at the pin. Now it's just a question as to what the distance will be. It's a little short of the pin, but he's got it up there on the green. He's going to have a birdie putt from about 35 feet, so nice shot from Jerry. Frank Sabaris now. Looks like he's got about a six iron. He starts that just right of the pin. It just needs to carry that bunker in front. It looks like it's going to do it, though. And he's got himself also on the front of the green. So we're two for two here on number 17. And Jerry Homeshack now looking over his birdie putt on 17. Hit it up there to the front of the green. And it's easy to be a little indecisive here on these Pete Dye greens. Sometimes you get over the ball and you don't feel as though the line you picked out might be absolutely correct. So backing away and taking another look at it isn't a bad idea, that's for sure. On its way it goes, and almost. So he'll give himself a good opportunity to par here. And now for his par, tournament leader here in the B flight, James Bird. Got a little bit of oil leaking coming in here, but a putt here, knocking this in right here, could certainly steady the ship. And oh, a really nice putt by James Bird, but okay, bogey four. Barring a disaster, he's probably going to have himself a good chance at winning the national championship. All right, here's Lieutenant Colonel Randy Dorsey. This is for his bogey now. He left one in the bunker, which is very easy to do out here. 
Let him in. Let him in. Very nicely done. Nice save for Randy. Randy made a nice save of bogey on the last hole. Knocked in about a 12-footer. Here comes Randy. And he's also hit it right down the middle. So very nicely done. Two for two here in the final group. But here's the big tee ball coming up here now. James Bird, the tournament leader. And he gets it a little off the bottom of the club, but that's going to run out pretty good. And maybe not drawn up the way he wanted it to be, but certainly the result is excellent. He's got a nice flat lie here in the middle of the 18th fairway, and that's going to put him in good position to seal the deal here in the B flight. And finally we have Mike Kim. A little bit of bad luck on the last hole, made double bogey. He starts it out right, it's drawing in, and that should be pretty good. Up the left side, and long for Mike Kim, so he's left himself in great position. So the final group here, all four players have put themselves in great position for approach shots here to the beautiful 18th at Hampton Hall. Randy Dorsey now getting ready for his third here on 18. Left it in the right green side bunker, and you know, even though he's got to kind of go up and over a mound, this is doable. And that's a pretty fine play right there by Randy Dorsey. Oh, just runs it by the hole. But a nice shot, and that should have shown James Bird, the tournament leader, exactly what he needs to do. I think more than anything, James wants to get it out at very worst two putt and just leave here with a trophy in hand. And that's a little bit short, but that's going to run down, and he landed it short enough, so that's going to be a beauty. And that's going to run about 15 feet by also, but mission accomplished. He got it out in one, gave himself a good opportunity for two putt, going to avoid the really big number here at 18. All right, Mike Kim here from just off the left side of the green. His ball landed on the green, but the momentum carried it off. Distance control is going to be the biggest challenge on this shot. I would definitely think that he wants to run it by the hole so he has an uphill putt coming back for his par. And pretty well done. Very well done by Mike Kim. So he's left himself inside of two feet for his par. Terrific chip. Okay, James Bird, our tournament leader, here on 18. He's given himself about out of the bunker, about 15 feet for par. And knowing where he stands right now, he's really just looking at two putt. Two putts, and he's going to be a national champion. And he leaves it just short, so he's got just a touch more work to do. But, you know, airing on the cautious side is definitely not a terrible play. And now Lieutenant Colonel Randy Dorsey. He's got just inside what James Bird had for par. Both of them were in the about the same spot there in that right green side bunker and hit pretty, pretty decent shots to this point. Randy didn't leave his short, and he knocks it right in for par. So on the last two holes, a couple of terrific putts for Randy Dorsey. Getting up and down from that right green side bunker, not many people are going to do it better. Mike Kim now for his par. He hit a beautiful chip from just long and left here on 18. Actually almost made it. And in the hole for his par, so very nice par for Mike Kim. And now James Bird. This is to more than likely seal the deal to win the B flight here at the Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. And right in for James Bird, so a very, very good tournament for him. Congratulations to James Bird, and even though it wasn't quite the finish he wanted to have, it certainly seems as though at the end, the garlands are going to go to him. So as things pan out here in the B flight, Mike Skeen from the Arkansas chapter put together the best round of the day to shoot 77 and come charging back to tie James Bird, who didn't have one of his best days, ended up shooting 86. So we have ourselves a sudden death playoff here at Hampton Hall. Skeen is the first on the tee. And it's down the left side. It needs to sit down just a little. And that should be okay. That's a big hit. He's going to have a short club in. And in regulation, he birdied this hole, so he already has some good vibes working here. All right, James Bird needs to do a little bit of regrouping here. His tee ball is away, and let's see where that's going to end up. He's giving a little bit of a lean. And it looks like that's headed off to the right side over there. So it looks like Mike Skeen, Michael Skeen from the Arkansas chapter, he definitely has the advantage after they've hit their tee ball here on 18. Getting ready for the second shots here now on 18 in the playoff. James Bird, if anything, well, he's got to make sure he gets it out of there and gets it up by the green because Michael Skeen is in a real good position. And he hits it, and it sounds like we've hit some trees, and that might have come down in the hazard. So I think he's really put himself behind the eight ball. So the door has swung wide open for Michael Skeen here on 18 in the playoff. So right now, all he wants to do, a shot right in the middle of the green, is definitely all he's looking for. And that's exactly what he's got. That might be going just a little bit long. Hits the back left of the green. Goes down into the collection area there, but definitely... Definitely not a bad spot compared to where James Bird is. So James Bird now, we're going to have to see where his ball ended up. 
James Bird did in fact hit the ball into the hazard with his second shot. He's taken his drop now and he is playing four. And he throws it up there and that's gonna be in the on the green. Rolling, rolling, just off the back, keeps going. Well, he's kept himself alive. He did what he needed to do. He got it up here near the green with a chance of put it in the hole. Michael Skeen now from off the back of the green. The job at hand right now is to get it up there and give himself a makeable par putt. But if nothing else, just get it up on the green because more than likely a five is going to get the job done here. And he hits what looks like it's going to be a pretty good shot. He's going to run it by, but only about about 15 to 18 feet, so a two putt from there very well might do it. James Bird now, if there was ever a time to chip one in, this would be it. And he hits it, it's definitely gonna get there, and oh, well, he gave it a run and he needed to give it a run. He had to give himself a chance to knock it in because two putts for Skeen and that would probably close the deal. So this is what it comes down to now. Michael Skeen, about 15 feet away, two putts will close it out and make him the winner here in the B flight. Pretty flat putt, not a whole lot happening here. So everything here is going to be based on speed. He gets it on its way and it's definitely not going to run its way by and oh he just misses it on the right side. He's left himself the better part of three feet though so this is not over yet. All right James Bird looking over his putt here. This is for his double. And this is going to be all about speed also. And this is no time to leave it short. The ball's on its way and he doesn't like the way it came off. So he's going to be just outside Michael Skeen. So James is still going to go ahead. And it looks like he's going to concede. Michael Skeen is going to be your winner here in the B flight. But after having the low round of the day with 77, birdieing this 18th hole in regulation, Michael Skeen from the Arkansas chapter is going to be the winner of the B flight here in the Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. And even though he misses on the high and the low side, he's still going to be a winner. So congratulations to Michael Skeen for doing what he needed to do here in the playoff and get himself a victory. He can now call himself a national champion. Well, when the day started out today, Michael, you were nine strokes back. How does the sound of Michael Skeen, national champion, sound? It was a hard fault, but it's awesome. It's amazing. Uh, all the guys back in Arkansas and everything came out here, and we sat down together last night and had a good old talk and gave me some pep talk, and it worked out. Tell us a little bit about your round. Obviously, today, the weather really became more of a factor. You know, the first day, the weather was actually perfect for golf. Yesterday, a little cooler, but still not too bad. But today, we had a little bit of rain. The temperature dropped. The temperature didn't even reach it up to the 60s, and we had a little bit more wind. So tell me about how you went around there today. You know, I played the same game I played yesterday because to me, the, con the conditions were about the same. The wind and everything, I got to play about the same shots I played yesterday. So I, I stuck to the same game plan I had yesterday and just made, made, made more putts today and had a few more birdies than I had yesterday. So that, How many birdies today? I had four today. You had four, and one of them happened here in regulation on 18. It did, it did indeed. A little bit different compared to a double bogey finish. <laughs> Have you been working on anything at home that's kind of helped you gear up toward this? Tell us about your season a little bit. Yeah, um, I actually struggled the first half of our season a lot with my driver. Um, irons have all been good. I uh, scrambled a lot this year, but the driver had really been giving me trouble. So all my, my points that I racked up or scores that I racked up are all off the tee. So I worked really hard on my driver before I got here and kept it in play out here, and it, it turned out really well. Is this your first visit to the national championship? No, I played out here last year. I actually broke my ankle last year while I was playing and kept on playing through, but uh, came out here and uh, fortunately avoided the uh, South Carolina pine cones, so I didn't break my ankle this time. Well, yeah, they can always be some kind of hazard, that's for sure. How long have you been a member of the Golf Week Amateur Tour, and what does it mean to you to be part of this group? You know, this is my second year, and uh, last year when I came out here, you know, I fell in love with the tour. I fell in love with the entire process of it. You know, it's a lot of fun, especially getting back into competitive golf. This is my second year back in competitive golf. I played back in high school. Uh, spent eight years in the Marine Corps and kind of lost my game a little bit, but just uh, met Jerry, our tour director, and uh, got signed up and been having a ball ever since. I love it. It's a great setup. So more than anything today, as you made your charge, 
What was the key today? Did you drive it and play better? Was it around the greens? Because certainly this is a beautiful golf course. The greens had some speed to them and you really had to be careful. Yeah, today was uh, more about hitting fairways. I think I hit two fairways yesterday. I played out of the rough all day, still shot an 82. And today my game plan was to tighten up the drive a little bit, just keep it in the fairway so I can have better shots into the green. Um, the greens here roll beautifully and they're true right on line. So I just sunk more putts. Well, Michael Skeen, like I said, you can now call yourself a national champion. Congratulations, and we hope to see you back next year. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. We're now joined by Jay Barnes, the winner of the championship flight this year of the Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. Jay, how does that sound? It's uh, pretty good. I, uh, I played pretty well for three days. Uh, playing against Joe Jaspers, um, which I play with him a lot. He uh, great player, great guy. And I just hung on. <laughs> well, as you said, you play with Joe a lot. You're both from the Charlotte chapter. Things got a little bit dicey out there today. Joe was four under through 15 holes and stumbled a little coming in. You obviously were pretty steady, but tell us about what happened out there. Well, Joe's a phenomenal player. You know, um, I started off really shaky. Uh, it started raining right when we started. Um, hit the first one out of bounds or in the water, made double. Then I proceeded to make a par, then a, a bogey on the third, then I had two birdies, a par, and then I think I birdied eight and nine. So uh, I kind of I kind of steadied the ship a little bit, hit some good shots on you know on the back. But Joe, you know, like a true champion, man, he <laughs> you know he he made it tough. So uh, you know I I just hung in there. You know Joe kind of stumbled coming on 17 and 18 and uh, kind of left the door open for me, and I, I got fortunate and, uh, you know, pulled through, so. What did you think about Davis Love's redesign of the ocean course now known as Atlantic Dunes? Well, I, I was told I have the, the course record now uh, the, after the first round, so. Now, I really like it. I You know, I played uh, here a couple years ago, and I think I finished third or fourth, and uh, it suits my game really well, so. Uh, the wind is not my, my friend, but uh, like I said, I, I played really well on Friday and, uh, you know, hung in there today. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I can't imagine why you wouldn't be. Anything you've been doing really well as of late that have helped you produce a little bit better? Well, you know, I, I play with Joe and Jim Autry and, and David and all these guys on the Charlotte Tour, and they are just... I watched them play and, and it's really made my game better, but I came into this playing really well. Um, play with a guy named Mike on uh, on the Monday before and we both shot pair of 66. He's coming in with a lot of confidence and uh, just really putted real, real well this week. A lot of good two putts. I made a lot of like swingers. I mean, I, I just, I really putted well. so. Probably my putting, and I drove it good other than today. I didn't drive it well, but yesterday I didn't miss a drive, and I don't think I missed a drive on Friday. Today I was, did what I had to do, you know, but uh, so driving and putting. But the, the course is great, so love it. Well, congratulations. You're now a national champ. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much for joining us here on Golf Center. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage of the Golf Week Amateur Tour National Championship. For everybody here, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.